when you do your local anesthesia uh, into the mouth, especially when you do a block, mandibular block, when you go through the mucosa, patient doesn't respond. They won't pull back. But when that needle tip goes through and hits the medial aspect of the ramus of the mandible, just that one point, that's when they're going to respond and pull back. That's because that's where the nociceptors are on the periosteum. So this mechanism that the orthopedic surgeons have known forever, they call joint splinting, doesn't have anything to do with the temporal joint, it has to do with all the other joints in the body. Well, that mechanism works for the temporal joint. It's exactly where it works. This joint is just a joint like any other joint. And it's not so special that like you learned in dental school, everybody talked about how special this joint was. No, it's, it's not really special. It has different anatomical design to it, <laughs> but it's a joint just like any other joint. So when you include that understanding of that mechanism that the orthopedic surgeons know all about called joint splinting, you then can, if you know your anatomy, your gross anatomy, then you can understand what happens with all these symptoms. And it's quite simple. When the joint becomes inflamed because of the three primary causes, which are bruxism, um, functional malocclusion, and trauma. Both, all three of those cause either acute or chronic inflammation and, and chronic pain.